Welcome to Pro Style Podcast. When you look at the landscape of football and the dominance of defensive tackles, guys like Aaron Donald, guys like Akeem Hicks, I mean, you, you got to think about one person. This guy had the pleasure of playing with three-time Pro Bowl, all, all pro, all American, number 14th overall pick out of Oklahoma. Please welcome my man, Tommy Harris, to the show. Tell me how you doing? I'm good, AB. Man, fun memory of you. My first time ever seeing Tommy Harris. Coming into training camp, I see a guy over there playing the piano and singing. I'm like, man, who is this dude? Like, what, what's going on? Like, who is this guy? And, I mean, he's just going, and, and it sounds good, so I'm kind of thrown off about, you know, this large individual playing the piano and could actually sing, man. Like, what? Was this something that you used to do every training camp or you just had to be at training camp early this particular time? What happened? Well, man, we we had to be there pretty early at this time. I know. I think you came late. You was getting your money bags right. So man, we were, like that. Yeah. You you know, I mean, we were there pretty early while you were getting your money situated. And I think Matt Tohina was there with me. But we were just playing around on there. I don't play much piano. I could play around on it, but I can sing. And when I put both of them together, it sounds like I'm doing something. But, you know, I just enjoy playing around. Yeah. So let's talk about your career a little bit, man. All pro. Three times. Pro bowler. I mean, you were very dominant during your time, especially playing in Chicago. What made you such a great player? I don't know. I think what made me such a great player was uh, pretty much the scheme. You know, uh, I've always played in the Tampa 2 defense since I was in high school. So it was pretty much just changing uniforms. I had been, that's like you running the same spread offense, your whole or West Coast offense from high school all the way up. I didn't have to change anything. The plays were the same. A pirate's been a pirate since I've been in 10th grade. Like, so everything has been pretty much the same. So I think just being able to execute my talent and my skill set and knowing what to do. And I all I attribute all that back to uh, being from Texas and being skilled by Texas football. <laughs> so the familiarity with the defense, being able to play with uh, guys like Anthony Adams, playing with Erlacher, Briggs, those guys who, you know, were dominant too. Talk us a little bit about Coach Levy Smith. You know, his departure from Chicago was one that wasn't, you know, really liked a lot by the players because we had just went 10-6. and six. Um, you know, guys really like Lovey. There are actually some guys that were crying when he got released. So just talk about playing for Lovey Smith and uh, what it meant. No, Lovey was unbelievable. Uh, I was the first part of his uh, legacy uh, when he started. He started when 2004, I was his first pick, and then Tank Johnson was his second pick. And so just just thinking about a, a, a coach that can come in and take two D tackles as your first and second pick <laughs> is crazy. Anyways, to me, but just to know that the faith that he had in us too, uh, love is like a father to me and Tank, and uh, just being able to uh, be under him. You know, Lovey was more than just a coach. He was like you were getting man skills, skills how to be a father. A <laughs> husband. Every day you were getting schooled on something beyond X's and O's. So I think that's why when you say a lot of guys were crying, it was like losing a father or being separated from a mentor, someone you knew that really cared about you. Hmm. Yeah, Levy was great, man. Uh, unfortunately, being on the offensive side of the ball, I, I ain't seen him that much, as much as I would like to have seen him, uh, just because, you know, he gave a, a, a lot of authority to the offensive coordinator to pretty much run and do their thing. And that's why, they, that's why you hire those guys to come in and yeah. do their job. And some guys were good, and there were some guys that were very bad. So let's, right. get, let's get into this locker room a little bit, man. Mm -hmm. This uh, this this tag team with you and Anthony Adams, man. How did how did this whole thing start? Because like you like you two were like inseparable. Like you guys, everywhere one went, the other went. If I mean, it could be the locker room, it could be taping, it could be the weight room, it could be the defensive room, team meeting. Man, what? <laughs> how did y'all create this bond? Man, me and Double created this. Uh, we were in Detroit, 
at the Super Bowl where Pittsburgh was playing Seattle, I believe in the uh, Detroit Super Bowl, like my second uh, season. And we were in Detroit. I had been watching this guy, number 91, for the 49ers that been, had been balling. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I'm talking balling, but he was like a sleeper. Nobody was really talking about him. So I knew at that time I was going into my uh, third year, I needed a nose guard and he was up on a contract. So while we were at the Super Bowl gospel celebration in Detroit, uh, he was playing around like, man, get me out to Chicago, man. Your boyfriend, like, you know, so I was like, man, okay. I've seen him <laughs> play. I said, you 91 from 49. Yeah, that, okay, I've been watching. I called over to Lovey and I said, Lovey, we got to get 91. Yeah. We get him over here. And next thing you know, Dub called me. He said, I'm signed. I'm a bear. Man. From then that's on, Blocker been next to me. <laughs> been my best friend ever since, man. That's uh, that's a dear person to my heart. But yeah. so, you know, every day having everybody in the locker room was just <laughs> that, that app crunches. So for most of the listeners and viewers that don't know, Double A is Spice Adams on all social media. And when he and Tommy Harris link up, you're done. Like, like there's nothing you can say. There's nothing you can do. Tommy can say, look at his shoes. And Double A will give the <laughs> loudest funny laugh that you will ever hear. And everybody would just, like, start laughing. Like, it, it, and vice versa. Like, you know, Double be like, look at Earl Pans. And Tommy will run over and start screaming. Ah! And it's yeah. just like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> like today is your day. And when those two guys linked up, it was, it was tough, man. Like, you, like nobody ever had a comeback. Like, I've never seen anybody, when you and Double attack them, they come back and, like, it's like, oh, man, that was good. Like, they came back. It was, no, it was the end of the game. No. What's, what's so crazy about Double A is everybody, he's doing such an amazing job in social media. But you got to tell them he's been doing that. He just didn't yeah. have a platform. For yeah, very that, true. That's, it's just being recorded now. <laughs> that was every day in Anthony Adams' world, man. So it's great just seeing him, my brother, be successful. You become successful. You already, you know, all-encompassing success. I you appreciate know, it, man. The great football player, underwear. You still modeling the underwear design? Hey, did by the way, did you ever get that pack that I sent you, that brass underwear? I, I sent okay. you some. No, I didn't. I didn't get. I didn't, no, I didn't get that pack. Uh oh, you you didn't give me that pack, bro. I'm pretty sure I I, I sent a couple extra larges your way. No, what, extra large. Yeah. Right off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause you, cause you, you owe me about that. You owe me. You saw, you saw. For you guys that don't know, I did a a underwear uh commercial with Brass. That's B R four S S. And my man Tommy saw it, and he was like, "Yo, I need some of the gear." Yeah. And, you know, they had a couple of leopard print, you know, different type of. No, it was very easy. So, <laughs> so, so I got a lot of flack about that. And my man told me, said he needed some. And I, I yeah. am pretty sure I sent some your way. Sent me some. Yes. Extra I large. I haven't, I haven't got them yet. Uh, I sent extra large your way. I'll make sure I show you. <laughs> if I get them. All right. Let's, let's talk about the city of Chicago, man. Um, you know, this past season, they, they, they had a shot. They had a chance. Uh, they fell short in the playoff. Uh, just talk about the type of city Chicago is uh, in terms of sports and how you think they can improve going into this next season. Well, I mean, I, I think they first must savor this season. Uh, I think we're so eager to always jump forward and not uh, – reflect and I think reflection is the best for the, the future of any organization and if they can learn to just simmer down and, and they're, they're all right they look good they don't have a lot of things they they're young very talented defense young offense that is producing highly like I think the sky's the limit for those guys but they need to sit back and enjoy what they did thus far and then the the next year take care of itself yeah so when I look at this defense, man, I look at the defensive line, you know, I think about Akeem Hicks. I think about Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack, you know, gets most of the praise. But Akeem Hicks is very, very good. Give, give me your scouting report on Akeem Hicks. Akeem Hicks, uh, 
unbelievable hand placement. Mm. I mean, talking about a guy that can, I, I literally sat and watched him. I said, you know, I'm going to sit back and really, I saw him a couple games flash and I was doing something myself. And then I said, you know, I'm going to sit back and really watch Khalil and watch Akeem Mix. <clears throat> man, that man hand replacement. He just knows how to work his hand. You know, I was a good get off guy. You couldn't get your hands out on me. Mm -hmm. I didn't like to be locked with anyone because I was smaller <clears throat> than a lot of guys and I couldn't always share, but I knew that if I could get you to rock, I could throw you all over the place. Right. Off of get off. But that guy has he has quickness, get off, he understands football, he's smart. The sky's the limit for that young man. Yeah. No, man, I, I think they got something that they can definitely build on for the next couple of years. Uh, defensively, offensively, too, they have some playmakers at the wideout position, Allen Robinson, Taylor Gabriel, some young guys, you know, the running back, Sarit Cohen. And I think if Mitchell Trubisky continue to take that step, I think they're going to be good uh, for the next, you know, five, six years. And well, so uh, they, on paper, they look they they look very well for the future. On oh, paper. yeah. You know yeah. On paper. So yeah. 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 <laughs> They yeah. should be another contending team next year if injuries stay out of it. I yeah. believe the team loves the, the culture the coaches brung in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unbelievable, man, just mm -hmm. watching those lights. Back. That was the first time since I've been out <laughs> I've ever been jealous of <laughs> this locker room. So just bringing that culture back was exciting to see also. And see, I'm mad, man, because I had Rasheed Davis on the show too, and I was saying, Rasheed, why do you think of that? And now I'm thinking that would have been a, a tummy double A ish type deal to 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 have the glowing lights in the locker room and dancing and having like crazy fun out there every win, you know? Who did we say our dad was? Who did we say was like <laughs> you think that man gonna let us say? Love is not gonna love me. Give me the Christmas, guys. You gotta cut this out. <laughs> That's, that was Lovey Smith Cusper. If you heard Jimmy <laughs> Christmas, you better run. Man, man what are we doing? What are, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Act like you've been there before. What are, what are we doing? Oh, man. Yeah, Lovey, Lovey would have shot that down fast, man. I'll never okay. forget the conversation Lovey and I had about my orange cleats. So after the second time that I wore the cleats, I come like, in. Even knowing you was going to get fined. Right. Yeah, even yeah. even though I was going going to get fine, I come into the locker room before the game, and my cleats aren't in my locker, and I'm like, "Well, I know I put them in my bag, where my cleats." So I go to Tony Medlin, uh, the the the, uh, the trainer, the equipment manager, and he's like, "Hey, hey, big guy, big guy, you you got to go talk to Levy. Look, Levy won't let me put them in your locker. I, I can't give them to you." So I go in go in the back. I go in there and talk to Levy. I'm like, "Levy, I." I need my cleats for the game. He's like, ah, big guy. I can't do it. I, I can't let you go out there. They said if you come out on the field with them, they're going to give us a delay of game penalty every time you're on the field. So, hey. it's like, that's it. It was like, that's the end of it. I was like, so you mean to tell me every time I go out on the field, we're going to get a delay of game for me having on some orange cleats. That, that's, was, that was crazy. That's a, and that's real. You know who used to sit out there? Look, Merton Hanks. Merton Hanks on the sideline. He would be out there looking at your whole outfit. <laughs> you got to take that Bible verse off your nose or we're going to find you $5 a game. Like, yeah, that's great. Interesting they picked Merton Hanks. He probably don't miss nothing. Man. Nothing uh, at all. That's yeah. good. I like that play on. That's good. Yeah. He, he, probably, <laughs> he probably don't miss nothing at all. So, man, I've seen you on BET. I, I've seen you uh, uh, give the word multiple times. Uh, should we be looking for, for anything upcoming with you uh, in terms of ministry? But not just my life is a ministry. So, hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm no preacher. Uh, I consider myself to be a reacher. Hmm. Uh, Perching that... Uh, I feel like you can never be great enough that God can't teach you and you can never be low enough that God can't reach you. Mm. So there's never, you know, at one point in my life, I was always trying to be perfect and trying to be, and that's what makes you fail a lot, trying to continue to be something that God didn't call you to be. God didn't call you to be perfect. God called you to trust his word and trust his will. And in all things, he will 
do it. He will give you the desires of it. It would all be what God wants through your life. So, you know, like just being able to um, use my life as a, a living sacrifice for real, not, not just, not, not just talking from a, my happy life and it, like to still love God under what I went through mm -hmm. and to be, just to teach those that are believing to endure in God. That's mm -hmm. the main faith that we must have is to endure. I started this thing called the locker room um, because of what happened in my life. Uh, uh, my wife finishing at an early age with her life. Uh, I had to retire to take care of two kids. And once I finished, I had to decide whether I go back to a game and get hurt for life and never have opportunity, you know, just to tell my kids I want to play and I got a messed up neck or something. So mm -hmm. I tried for a little bit and then next thing you know, it's like every door kept getting shut on me and it wasn't meant for me to go back. I went back to Tampa for the first time to do a workout and I cried like a baby the whole way leaving my kids for the first time. <laughs> I knew I didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. I was messed up, but I just want to, uh, I go around now just sharing my, my, uh, my life story with others about just appreciating where they're at today and don't beat themselves up in where they're at today, but to find a spirit of gratefulness. And once you find gratefulness to be able to say thank you, uh, or I learned that depression comes from wanting so much. Mm. And whenever you want to get rid of depression, stop, stop asking, stop wanting and say, thank you. Yeah. And when you can start saying, thank you. Realize you have more than enough. You have, you're living way above means. It's just, we live in a capitalist society that competes with others and looks at others. And the more you see other people's stuff, the more you think yours is not, and that's not the reality. Reality is that you are abundant and you have more than enough. So just being able to get people to that point through my life, what I'm learning and be able to be even a, a position to help men that are retired. I started this thing called Tommy Harris, the locker room. And you can go check that out, TommyHarrisLockerRoom.com. And um, we travel around, we leave huddles in each city. And those huddles keep men updated on all information, books, uh, therapies, whatever they need during those day-to-days, not just Sundays, you know what I mean? Yeah. Day-to-day. -day. Yeah. So that's just it. I don't want to talk your head off. No, nah, man, that's good. That's big. Uh, because one thing that we talk about a lot of times is uh, just you being able to like reach other people by sharing your story, which is very big, um, you know, to be able to, you know, not only go through that grief in that situation, but to be able to share with other people exactly like what you've been through. And I think it's, um, you know, highly commendable. And just to see you continue, you know, that trajectory. We don't know what the future has for us, but, you know, everything's looked very, very bright for you, man, as it has been. And so I, I want to shift gears just a little bit, all right? Because we had, we, we've had this conversation about, about hip-hop artists. You told me that you could be the best rapper in the world. Yeah, I could. The best. Especially if I write it. Um, right. I don't you, write. You that. said the like, best. If I wrote like they wrote and went back and kept it like I do my music, if I send you some of my music, I got a country album coming out in April. Wait, well, I'm wait, gonna a show you wait, wait a second. I'm going to show you what I would have done. Wait a second. Wait a second. You have a country music album dropping this summer. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. What's the title of it? The title of my Deflated. Deflated. Mm -hmm. Who produced this album? Uh, Billy Dawson. Billy uh, Dawson. Tennessee. I tell you, I'm always in Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. What 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 type of tune should we expect on this country music album? Like a bluesy, uh, bluesy Ray Charles country. I I don't know. It's it it's a new sound. It's a <laughs> it's a new sound. Yeah, it ain't. It ain't. It ain't no Darius Rucker. It ain't no Kenny Chesney. None of them. No, nah, it's like all their music with with Ray Charles. In the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey man, I can't wait to hear this. Yeah. I'm I'm excited now. I can't wait to hear this because I love all genres. I don't. 
you know, put myself in a box and say, I'm only hip hop or I'm only R and B or I'm only gospel. I love a little country too. Yeah. You know? What what you what you love? Country. Oh, you went to you went to that. Yeah. You probably, oh, come on, man. Put that in your headphones. You know, I went to Vanderbilt University, man. Nashville, country music city. Uh, I pretty much didn't have a choice, all right? Like, you go to any party. I'll let you hear a little bit of it. All right, we got a little snippet. Oh, man, you got it? No, I ain't hear the snippet. We we didn't hear anything. It ain't, it ain't playing. It's it ain't not. playing. Oh, my goodness. Listen, dude. Deflated it might- is not playing i'll send it to you and you can it's playing on my phone but it's not oh here we go if i reached out to touch you right now a snippet of deflated by tell me right off my finger would you give me the honey only the singer If you're not really beautiful Then baby I'll be a liar Uh-oh. And if life's just a circus Then I'm a clown walking that wide That's that, that's that snippet. You know what I'm saying? That, that's that snippet of Deflated by Tommy Harris, man. You know what I'm saying? Just had to get, you know, just a little we, bit of uh, stuff. Hey, man. This yeah. summer, that, that's going to be big. Yeah, we got a lot, though. It's a, so, it's a lot of stuff coming. So I, I used to have issues, right? I used to have issues with the pregame music that the Bears used to play. It was, it was so old. Like, they would play Soldier Boy. Insulting. But Soldier Boy was for... for they were stuck in Hester's era. Yeah. He made that song stay. They never, they thought that was always Super Bowl year. Man, they, it was like 20, what, 12, and yeah. he's still bumping Soldier Boy. I'm like, <laughs> but Hess was out there doing the same dance. He was still doing the same dance. The crowd got into it. The people loved it. And so for me, man, you know, you just go with the flow. But here's my question for you. You got one song before you going out. You hitting the field. What you playing? Uh, Phil Collins. I could feel it coming in the air tonight. Uh oh. Was that your go-to song? That was it. That was it. Mm-hmm. What about that song? Made that that one song. Obviously, it being you know one of the most popular songs ever. Why why did you choose that song? Because the song just made, you know, like, it's all about putting yourself in a mental place where you start to just think of your, I would always walk the field listening to that song. Like, I could feel it come, I feel it is about to happen, you know what I'm saying? Even though the song was towards a sad story of watching a girl die. Right. That's why I picked, I picked the song because of just the words of, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. I wasn't Mm. really... No, I don't, all songs don't go lyrically to me. And some some of them can have just a good rhythm. I know it's crazy or stupid lyrics, but the beat got me captivated or that. Yeah. But that little riff, I can feel it coming yeah. in. The, oh, the whole, oh. That whole breakdown. Dun, 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 I've been dun, waiting dun, dun, on this dun, dun, moment. I've been waiting on this for all of my, and I don't ever want myself to forget this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's what that song would always make, captivate the moment. Gotcha. Well, man, it, this has been fun, man. It's been catching up, uh, being able to talk about a few things that you got going you on. With the Illuminati, too, on your shirt. Go ahead. Yeah, no, that's like H-Town. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. H- okay. yeah. <laughs> well, hey, man, how can the people follow you on social media? Uh, Tommy Harris, uh, Tommy Harris 90 on Twitter, and Tommy Harris Instagram, Facebook, Tommy Harris. And uh, TommyHarris.com, Tommy Harris Lock. Check it out. Y'all tell me what you think. Thank you, EB. Hey, man, that's my man, Tommy Harris. I appreciate you rocking out with us. We can't wait for that country music album to drop this summer. Deflated. Hey, man, I appreciate you. Bless you. Yes, sir.